a quick guide to using OSC information sent from your mobile device to Max 8 to control, in this case, a Jamoma module, a Tremolo module right here, although you can actually use OSC information to control anything you build in Max. So how do you do that? Well, first make sure your mobile device is on the same network as your computer. Take a note of your computer's IP address. Make sure you put that into the host IP address on the Touch OSC settings page. And take a note of the port number on the settings page, the outgoing port number from your mobile device. And once you've got that information, that's essential to start patching here in Max. So I'm going to press N to get a new object and then UDP receive. As soon as I press U, it just pops up with autocomplete UDP receive. And I'm going to type in the number on my phone for the port, which is 8000. OK, and then just to see if I'm getting any information when I move the dials on my phone. Like a kind of monitor, I'm going to use a message object for which I press M. And I'm going to connect this, this is an outlet, this outlet to the right hand inlet of the message box. And I'm going to enlarge it. And as soon as I press, uh, sorry, I turn the dial on my phone, you see this information coming out. Now, if you've got an interface on your phone with several dials and buttons and so on, then every time you press something else or you move another dial or a slider or a fader, you're going to get a different value. You notice how for these two dials that I'm pressing on my phone at the moment, I get rotary one, then I get rotary nine. So what this tells me is that all information from the phone is coming out of this outlet uh, through this um, cord. And I need to filter that because what I'm trying to do is to control these separate dials on the tremolo module. So I'm going to need a few more objects to deal with this information. We'll do those in a second. But first, notice that the OSC information is divided into a address, what looks like a directory address forward slash one forward slash rotary nine, and then a value. So this is the address of the dial on my phone that is creating this value and the value is updated live while I turn that dial through Wi-Fi. Okay, so uh, before we work at with the information that's coming out of here and find a way of piping it into the Tremolo module, let's just have a look at what kind of information does Tremolo expect in order to talk to my mobile phone, as it were. So I'm gonna use another M for message, and this time I'm gonna take the right-hand outlet of the Tremolo module, and I'm gonna connect it to the right-hand inlet of the message box here. And I'm going to lock the patch by holding down command and clicking on the screen. And then I'm going to move this dial and see, you can uh, actually enlarge these boxes by dragging these handles here. Um, I'm gonna move the dial and you see it is giving me an updated value, whatever the uh, frequency value is at the given time. And that is printed here. And it's also giving me a similar kind of address here, LFO forward slash frequency. Okay, so this is the information that this module wants to, uh, it kind of needs to have this ID, let me put it that way, in order to understand this information. So what I need to do is to chop off this, take this value and paste that value along with this ID so that this module will understand the information. Okay, so I need a few more objects to do that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a root object. So I'm gonna press N, R, O, U, T, E. It's also completed. And now I'm gonna type forward slash one, forward slash row three, one. And I'm gonna connect UDP receive 
to that box and I'm going to hold down Alt on a Mac. I'm going to click and drag to make a copy of this message box. Could just as easily have pressed M and then wire those up again. And this time when I move the dial on my phone, I don't get the address. I just get the value. Okay, so that's good. So I've got the, the value now. Now I need to find a way of getting this number to control this dial. So what I do here is I use another object, n prepend. Again, it's auto completed. And here I need to put in a few values. I'm going to put a new address here, but the first one is the name of this module. And it's been automatically named for us tremolo tilde dot one. So I'm going to use that. You can change that name by going to the uh, inspector and uh, uh, writing what calling it whatever you want but I'm just going to use the default name and then I'm going to add the address of the particular dial that I'm trying to control which we know from before is LFO frequency so forward slash tremolo tilde dot one forward slash LFO forward slash frequency and what that will do is that will put this information here, this address will go in front of this value. And then that whole packet will be sent to Tremolo, to this module. And it will understand that it, you want um, Tremolo to use this number to control this particular dial. And we know that because when we moved it and we put our monitor here, we know that is the particular address that correlates with that dial. Okay. So let's wire that up to prepend. And then we need a final module, uh, sorry, a final object to send that stuff to Tremolo and the object concerned is j.send. This will send information, OSC information to any Jamoma module. Okay, so I am moving the dial and it would appear to have change the value here because as soon as I move the dial it shoots down to zero Now the reason it does that is because at the moment my dial if you look at this number here is sending out numbers between minus 60 and 6 and that doesn't correlate with the required values for this dial you see that the, um, my, dial, my dial on my phone is at its maximum of six, but it's only sent the dial of LFO frequency up to a tiny fraction there of its whole scale. It does indeed go all the way up to 100. So we need to find a way of changing the scale of values that I'm sending out of the phone. Now, there are two ways you can do that. You can either do it on the phone, if you like, by accessing the touch OSC editor and making sure that the range minimum and the range maximum for the particular dial that you're using on your phone matches the required range for the particular dial that you're trying to control on the computer so in this case 0 to 100 and that's probably the easiest way to do it and i'd recommend you do that but just for uh the sake of um, learning how to do this i'm going to show you how to if you as it were fix a range in max because it involves using an object called scale that is so useful that you will find yourself using a max over and over again in many, many different contexts. So it's worth knowing how to do that. But as I say, there's basically two ways you can do this. Here it is then. So new object, scale. Now scale has four, expects four values. And those values are the minimum and the maximum of the current range and the minimum and the maximum of the target range. So we, I forgot what it was now, but we know that when my phone is at a minimum, yes, it's minus 60. And when it's at a maximum, it's six. So we can put in, first of all, zero dot, meaning floating point. Uh, sorry, not zero dot, minus 60 dot, six dot. So that's my starting range, if you like. And then my target range is this one, naught to 100. Again, floating point numbers. So naught dot 100 dot. And this is going to convert the values that 
come out of rotary one. I'm going to put it in between root and prepend. So good, it put it in there and then reconnect. And then when I move my dial, that works perfectly. So my phone is at zero, the dial on my phone's at zero, it's going all the way up, and now it's at its maximum, and that matches the maximum on LFO frequency.